UMass President Marty Meehan is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. The ongoing battle of COVID on campus with tens of thousands of students all across the entire system. What is the path forward for the man at the helm since 2015? And the race for governor in Massachusetts goes to a new level with Maura Healy in. Is everything different now? Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OTR. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wood. Great to have you with us this morning. Thankfully, Omicron cases here in Massachusetts are on the decline, but as you can see, we continue to follow social distancing protocols here in Studio C this morning, and UMass President Marty Meehan is here with us, and you can see how far he is away, too, so the social distancing applies. We would like to be closer, but we'll make the best of things, so it's great to see you, Marty. Great to see you. Great Thanks here. for coming in on OTR this morning. Great to be here. So let's start with the pandemic. This is sort of a multi-layered question. Do you, are you still doing contract, uh, contract, contact tracing? Do you have enough tests for students and faculty? And have you gotten enough support, supplies, and information like from the federal and the state government? Well, I think we've done reasonably well. Reasonably well. The federal government did a COVID package. It was very helpful to us. Uh, we had lost a lot of money in that we, we uh, students went home. Uh, we gave them back the money they had paid, obviously, to stay at our campuses, and, and we lost millions and millions of dollars there. The federal government provided some relief. Uh, I think we have it down now in terms of testing. Uh, uh, over 96 percent of our employees and students are vaccinated. Uh, they have booster shots. So I think we're doing reasonably well. And if you look at the testing that's going on as we brought people back for the semester in ev all of our campuses, uh, the number of positive tests were very, very low, in fact, significantly lower, Janet, than the communities that they're located in. And I think that's a good judge. So I feel as if we're we're getting there. Uh, you look at what the experts are saying, it looks like uh, we could get on the other side of this, but uh, we still want to make sure that we keep our faculty, students and staff safe. Um, a lot of schools are no longer doing contact tracing. They are leaving it to the students to let others know if there has been exposure. Is that what you're doing on the campuses or is it varying? We are pretty much, but we're doing testing as well. So if you regularly test mm -hmm. uh, you uh, and have folks vaccinated, it changes the whole paradigm when people have been vaccinated twice and gotten their booster shot. Um, so, so we're in a better uh, shape with that, but we're monitoring it because obviously this uh, uh, new variant is, is is tough and it's it spreads. So we're doing the best we can, given the fact that we have college students and it's really difficult to right. to totally control where and when they are right. and what they're doing, that type of thing. Right, right, I, right. I think we're doing reasonably well. And and with the campus obviously in Boston, that's gonna that's gonna affect things more too. So what what is the infection rate on on the campuses? Uh, it, it, as I said, the testing is at 96 percent. Yeah. Right? Well, no, 96 better than 96 percent of the number of people that have been vaccinated right. twice and gotten booster shots. In some campuses is up to 99 percent. Really? Uh, for example, at the medical school and at Lowell. Uh, in terms of the number of people that test positive, we brought everyone back. Uh, we asked them to get tests before they came, but we tested everyone that when they came back significantly lower than what the state average is. And as I mentioned earlier, in every part of the state where we have a campus, it was lower than that area. Mm -hmm. Just as an example, Lowell, uh, UMass Lowell tested 2.5% positive. Well, the Lowell testing positive rate is 29%. Right. So in every single of our five campuses, we're doing much better than the uh, community. How, how do you located. handle the, 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 that smaller percentage, the, two, the, the under 3%? How do you handle it? Do you isolate well, we them, them or do you tell them? We put you, them in quarantine yep, uh, yep. for the appropriate. We look at what the CDC says to do. We put them in quarantine. We test them. And when they test uh, negative, they still have to wear a mask. When yep. they come up, they test negative. They're back in the, uh, they're back in the classroom. Let's talk about the staff. Do you worry about burnout with the faculty? Uh, studies show that nationally the number of teachers stressed out, frustrated by this pandemic are retiring early or they're changing professions. Do, are you seeing this yet on any of your campuses? Uh, we are seeing it. It affects our faculty and staff. If you look at really across the sector, not just higher education, but in, in every sector in business, uh, people are having a hard time retaining employees. More people are retiring. There's also an issue of mental health with, with everyone. And this, this, this COVID experience has affected everyone, but particularly students. Uh, we have a crisis, in my view, in, in mental health of our students. We need to provide more uh, services for them. Uh, we have to do a better job at it. I'm very concerned about that, as well as losing uh, faculty mm -hmm. and staff and employees. Um, are you worried at all about finding more faculty to replace the folks that are leaving or that are unable to teach anymore? We believe that we will be able to attract great faculty. One of the great things that have happened over the last 
oh, 15, 20 years at the University of Massachusetts. We, we recruit faculty from all over the world. Uh, we have pipelines of faculty, so we are confident that we'll be able to replace folks, but we, we don't want to lose good people. We want good people to stay with the university. It's, it's one of the reasons why we've been able to go up in terms of the trajectory of uh, our rankings and all the rest of it. Our faculty are world class. We have to keep that faculty on a very high level. Marty, you just mentioned this, and, and it, it triggers this in my head. College is a time for students not only to, to learn, but, but to expand their horizons and test their strengths and weaknesses. How do they do this long term, knowing that they are getting cheated by the pandemic? I, you, it's fair that to say they've been cheated by a pandemic. Very difficult. And, uh, you know, I think of uh, what we like to do at UMass is provide experiential learning opportunities, internships, co-ops. And it's been very difficult in this environment to provide those, those types of opportunities for students. In addition to that, it's been somewhat restricted in terms of students going to athletic events and right. things like that. And uh, it, that's a real problem. I'm, I'm hoping, look, I think uh, today people need to get advanced degrees first uh, after they finish their bachelor's degree. I'm hoping that, that we're able to keep more students in a field that they like to get a master's degree, to get an advanced degree, and hopefully we'll be out of this and they'll get that opportunity for those, you know, learning opportunities, experiential learning, but also just the experience of being on a college campus. You talked about this a little bit earlier. You have a vaccine mandate and you just recently added a booster mandate. Um, so, and you have nearly 100,000 people in overall on all your campuses and that's students and faculty members. Um, and you talked about the high percentage of people that have been vaccinated, but the ones that do leave, what do you do? I mean, how do you, how do you handle it? What, how, do you just tell them they've got to leave if they, I mean, how much time do they have to adjust to the, um, well, to the mandate? Some- there are some uh, students and faculty that, that get exemptions. We have some people that work in the university, for example, in IT, where they don't necessarily have to be uh, you know, in the workplace. And I think we're finding this in all fields across the field, across the, uh, the country today. Some people who can't, don't have to work at home uh, don't have to work in the office of working at home. So mm-hmm. we're managing through it. We're mm-hmm. trying to make sure we provide opportunities. Mm-hmm. We're trying to use uh, Zoom and other uh, technology that we have to make sure that our 75,000 students uh, do well and graduate. And, and frankly, I'm pretty proud of the job that uh, our faculty and our students have done in terms of getting through this crisis. I'm proud of the role we've played in vaccinating uh, so many Massachusetts uh, residents. So I, I think that UMass has rolled up its sleeves. We're a research institution. We have a lot of research going on, on our campuses to help deal with best practices in, in COVID and also to find long-term solutions. Well, like to, that, to that very point, Barney, do you, do you think that, that our future is, maybe at the UMass, you, you can answer that, at least specifically there, that, that those who can work at home will work at home in the future, regardless of the status of the of the pandemic. Yeah, I think that's the future of work. And those people who can work at home are going to work at home. In fact, you, as you mentioned earlier, it's difficult to retain employees. It's difficult to attract employees in this environment. If you don't have an option for an employee who can work at home, you're not going to hire that employee or you're not going to keep that employee. So the, the paradigm, if you, and we're the third largest employer of Massachusetts. So we, we employ uh, uh, 18,000 people. So we need to be competitive to attract people. The future of work is going to be in those instances where people can spend some time out of the office working at home, they're going to want that opportunity. We're going to have to provide it for them if we want to keep them.